All right, friends, Miss Nemeth here. I thought we would scare, share one more Skippy John Jones book since we missed our day yesterday. And because I, like I said, I love these Skippy John Jones books and they're a lot of fun to read during the summer. So if you get a chance, you can go back and read this one later in the summertime. So today, the Skippy John Jones book that we're going to read is called Skippy John Jones, Lost in Spice. So on this one, Remember, we said Skippy John Jones loves to use his imagination, okay? Oh, yeah, Annie. You want to see him using his imagination? Now, Annie's also looking for treats because I told her she couldn't bark anymore. With this storybook that we have, um, he loves to use his imagination, but sometimes it gets him into trouble. So, where do you think Skippy John Jones is going to go in this story? Does anybody know what planet he is on? Hmm. And look at when we look at the cover, it always gives us some clues about what we might see. I see a, a toy. I see looks like a little alien. It looks like a flying saucer and a rocket ship. All right. And again, if you're just joining us, the author of this book is Judy Shatner. Skippy John Jones Lost in Spice. Oh, there he is. It looks like he's he's playing on the ground. It looks like he's drawing something. Oh boy, I know we like to draw pictures and look at what he drew. Looks like a picture of aliens. Oh, and there's a, let's see, it says my model of Mars. Mars, hmm. Skippy John was nuts about Mars. Oh, and look at, there he is, he wrote Mars. Just like we've been practicing our writing this year. He has some paint. Because it was the red planet. I love red, that's what I said, and I musty put some rusty in my big boy bed. So off he went to the kitchen where Mama and the girls were starting supper. We're making tuna poodle casserole, crooned his sister, Jilly Boo Jones. Tuna noodle casserole, corrected Mama. A poodle is a dog, and we don't eat dogs. Skippy John thinks he's a dog, said Jezebel. Yeah, agreed Jujubee. He thinks he's a chihuahua. Because his ears are too big for his head, added Jezebel. That's enough, scolded Mama. Pinkie Pie's ears are just fine. But Pinkie Pie was oblivious to their chatter. So look at He thinks he is a dog. <laughs> and look at and they, the girl said his ears are bigger, right? Look at their ears. Look at Skippy John's ears. That's why he likes to pretend he's a dog. May I please borrow your bottles of red spice, Mama? He asked politely. Yes, you may, replied Mama, pleased with her boy's manners. But you better not be thinking about doing any sprinkling. Nuh-uh, said Skippy, blinking. Or tasting or pasting or wasting. If you know what's good for you, she added. Well, Skippy John Jones always knew what was good for him. So look at Skippy John Jones bar borrowed a spice from the kitchen. And Mom said, don't sprinkle it. Don't taste it. Don't be playing with glue with it. But, uh-oh, look at what's he putting it on. His kitty bed. And that was bouncing and pouncing and rocketing in the rusty red dust. Oh, I'm Skippy John Jones in a minute in a big race to be the first dog to bounce into space. Then a bit of the spice tickled his nose and ah, cha, chewy, the kitty boy sneezed. Sometimes the spice like pepper will make us sneeze, right? He had a little bit of a sneeze there. I love the pictures in this book. That's I think what one of my favorite things is. Oh, holy tamales, exclaimed Skippy John Jones as he shot past his reflection. What's up with that doggy in the mirror? Then using his very best Spanish accent, he said, oh, You are not a Siamese cat, dude. You are a wicked red chihuahua. And look, at there's his imagination turning on. Look what he sees. Then quicker than you can say, jumping jacks on Jupiter, the kitty boy found his mask and cape, a mirror, a marble, and his sock monkey. He stuffed these things and a few other things into his spacesuit while he sang in a muy, muy soft voice. My name is Capito Fresquito, 
And I think there are mush and patty toes. Say Some say the creatures share all of my features. I hope it's just not the balitos. So Skippy John Jones is getting ready to turn on his imagination. He's packing his bag so he can go to Mars, and he's all ready. Now, in our other book we read, where does he go when he wants to use his imagination? Into his closet. Back in the kitchen, the girls were being a big help to Mama Junebug Jones. I love noodles, declared Jilly Boo. Noodles are silly, said Jezebel. That's because they're nude, said Jujubee. They're not nude, said Jilly Boo, giggling. They're naked. And she tossed one up to the ceiling where it stuck. But Skippy John Jones wasn't stuck at all. He was suited up and ready for liftoff. The astronaut Tito took one small step into his closet for chihuahuas. So there's his door, right? And he's going in. He's going to turn on his imagination. And one giant leap into the universe for Los Chimichangos. He was well into his orbit when a comet covered in crazies cruised by. Who goes there? hollered Scapito. Martian! came the answer. Martian who? Martian to your closet and get us some frijoles, dude, said the voice. Paquito Tito, exclaimed Scapito. Is that you, amigo? And there they are. See, it is all of us, Los Chimichongos, said Paquito Tito, the smallest of the small ones. We are going to build a chili Pablo pipeline from Mars to Earth, Papito. <gasps> Not the chili powder pipeline, declared Scapito. Exactamente, howled the doggies. Por qué? asked Capito. Because, amigo, began Don Diego, the biggest of the small ones, the chili powder on Mars is muy caliente, and it will keep us warm in el invierno. Then off they zoomed. So look, at they are going to build a pipeline to keep them warm in the winter, right? Because in the winter it gets really cold. So the chili powder is going to keep them hot. And there's his friend, see? And there's Don Diego, the biggest of the small ones. And see if you can find the smallest doggy. I think he's right there. I think that one's Poquito Tito, the smallest of the small ones. The Cuckoo Comet and the Kitty Boy made it to Mars with a soft landing. Ooh, sighed Don Diego. That felt marvelous. Then he turned a glance at El Scapito. No offense, Poco Coco, but why the suit de la nieva? asked Don Diego. It's not a snow suit, declared Scapito. It's a space suit. Dude, you don't need a space suit up here, said Paquito Tito. You need a spice suit. Mars is covered in chili powder, Chico. This made the peritos go loco in the rojo, singing, Chillery, chillaroo, chillerito. It's a wag of the tail for Scapito. For there's nothing as nice as a rolling hot spice in the light of the Martian Moonitos. And look at, there's a sign that says, Welcome to Mars. And Skippy John Jones is wearing his snowsuit, right? When do you use your snowsuit? In the winter, in the snow. Not when it's hot, like the summertime. <laughs> but remember, he's using his imagination. He's playing dress up. But a roll in the rojo should have been a big no-no because quicker than you can say, monkeys making meatballs. Can you guys say that one? Monkeys making meatballs. Scapito rolled and rolled in the opposite direction from his pipeline puchitos. Whew, said Scapito panting. You boys were right. The spicito is hot. The astronaut Tito went so calor under the collar that he just had to take off his spacesuit. Muchachos, he called out. There was no answer. Uh-oh, said Scapito to himself. <gasps> I'm lost in spice. But the astronaut Tito did not panic. He grabbed his binoculars and climbed onto a roca. And that is when he saw it. <gasps> Holy green gorillas, said Scapito. It's a Martian Tito. The Pochito pounced just a whisker away from the unearthly creature. So look at, he's got his magnifying glasses there, but he sees a Martian, an alien. Oh, and here's one of those special books. See how the words look different? We gotta turn this book. Dude, 
Dude! Your ears are too big for your head. Your ears are too big for your head. Your head is too big for your body. Your head is too big for your body. You are not a Martian. You are not a Martian. What did he find? <gasps> a Martian. Oh my. But it looks just like him. They look like twinsies. No, I know I'm not a Martian dude, said Scapito. I'm a Chihuahua, just like you. Mm. To prove his point, Scapito ran back into his spacesuit and pulled out a little red Rojo mirror he had packed. Look, said Scapito, holding it up so both of their faces showed. We are twins. The Martian was so mesmerized that he could not take his Uno Ojo off himself. Scapito was so excited that he could not start, stop hopping and flapping his arms. Then all of a sudden, he remembered that he was lost. Hey, come on, Uno Ojo, called the kitty boy. We've got to find mis amigos. But Uno Ojo said nada. He simply sat and stared at his image in the mirror. Okie dokito, said Scapito. I'll go, but you have to keep your eye on my stuff, especially my sock monkey. Then he took off faster than a tiddlywink in a tornado. So look at, there's the Martian. He's looking at his mirror. But Skippy John Jones says, make sure to watch my stuff, right? I'm going to go see if we can find, find our friends. He didn't have to go far. In less time than it takes to tickle a termite, Scapito found his cucuritos cuc cooped up inside the crater. Mrs. Novak and I always love this story because it has a lot of tongue twisters. Dudes, shouted Scapito. Dude, whispered Don Diego. You are just in tiempo. In time for what? Scapito asked. Hombres de la Marte, said Piquito Tito with a shiverito. <gasps> Not the men from Mars, declared Scapito. The mere mention of Martians made the muchachos go mad. Knock, knock. Who goes there? There are Martians everywhere. Slurping, sloppy, ice cream cones, speeding in the slicey zones. Mossy Martin's on the move. Who do they think they have to prove? We did not come here for a fight. We want to build. We will not bite. Then Scapito felt the fur stand up on the back of his neck. So look at They're all hiding because here come the men from Mars. And there's Skippy. Here they come. Because the cra critter's crater was about to have Cinco crazy creatures for company. Cinco means five. Holy hoppleheads, hollered Scapito. Here they come. Before Scapito could think of what to do, the Verde visitors piled out of their space buggy bearing all of Scapito's stuff. Two were green and mossy. The third was green and bossy. The fourth was green and funky, and the fifth was green and... Look, at there's his mirror, his snowsuit, his marble. Oh, the fifth was green and... Monkey! Yelled Scapito. That's my sock monkey! Get out, declared Scapito's one-eyed Martian twin emerging from the green group before him. Without saying another palabra, Scapito picked up the monkey's paw and pulled. First, Scapito yanked this way. Then Uno Ojo yanked that way. It's Tago Monquito, declared the Chimichangos. On the count of three, the papitos planned to pull Tambien. But as the doggies shouted, Uno, the Martians hollered, Ojo, Uno, Ojo, Uno. Ojo! And uh-oh, Uno Ojo let a go-go and sent the kitty boy flying. Ah, there he goes. Scapito and his sock monkey hurtled headfirst back to earth and out his closet door. Kaboom! He hollered, breaking through the sound barrier and maybe his head. Oh, Skippy John Jones, exclaimed Mama, rushing into his room. What on earth are you doing? The kitty boy stood up and shook off a cloud of red spice. I didn't do anything on earth, Mama, replied Skippy John. I did everything on Mars. 
Oh, that's terrific, Major Tom, said Mama. Then she straightened the kitty boy's ears. You must be starving. So look at, remember how he said he was using his imagination? Look, there he's got a picture over there. There's the Martians and his chimichangos. And look at who was being the Martian. Hmm? His sister, right? He was playing with his sisters. Later that night, the kitty boy looked up at the starry sky. Mars, he muttered, beginning to bounce. Oh, I'm Skippy John Jones, and I like my red jammies, because they're made from the wool of the green Martian lammies. Stop bouncing, Pinkie Pie, scolded Mama. I'm not pink, I'm red, said Skippy. It's over, Red Rover, said Mama. Just go to sleep. And that's exactly what he did. The end. And there it is. And look at, remember how we saw the bumblebee in the corner of the other book? Now we've got a little Martian, a little alien. And look at, there's the stars. So tonight, friends, if you want, another thing you could do, you could go out and take a peek at the stars if it's a clear night. Right now, it looks like it might be a clear sky tonight. So you can go out and see if you can see some stars with your family. That's also a great thing to do in the summer. You can kind of go out and look all the way up at the stars in the sky. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed our second book today, and I miss you. All right, we will see you soon. Have a great day. Bye.